Okay, we are live. Yeah, Kyle, that's I like that. That sounded very perfect. I've never heard that before. This meeting is being recorded. I know. I <laughs> yeah. I, they they um we're on Zoom and we try to share. Uh, they've had to change a bunch of settings because people during this whole lockdown, um, they have nothing better to do with their time, I guess, than to figure out how to hack into people's Zooms. Yeah, I, I've read about that. I've read about that. We're gonna try and blame me, but it's pretty it's it's pretty well known, so we don't have to put it at my doorstep this time, right? Now. <laughs> yeah. Well. Hello, Danica. It's How so are you, my friend? You. It's so, oh my gosh, it's been so long since it seems like it's been forever. <laughs> as I said off the air, you look radiant as always, glowing, <laughs> tropical, happy, TGIF, my friend. Feels very good, as I told you. I was excited to do this. Oh. Uh, excited to see you on the air. So thank you for having me on today, and thanks for joining me. And I know you feel the same way. Yes, yes. I, this is the, this is an exciting week, and yet I feel like I'm very frazzled, which is one of the reasons I put my little the beach scene in the background um, because it helps me to to uh, serenity now, yeah. right? Seinfeld, serenity now, serenity now. That's where Danica is. She's oh, oh my goodness. So. But the, yeah, this is a huge. This is a very important week. We, um, it is parental, it, we're going into Parental Alienation Awareness Week. Um, and there are a lot of things that I did, um, I've done in, in, you know, over the years to honor and kind of gear up for Parental Alienation Awareness Month, week, day. And, um, some of, and a lot of those just got canceled. Like yesterday, I was supposed to be on the radio, canceled. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, receiving proclamations from the different municipalities canceled. Um, I did get some in the mail. I got, I got some in the mail. Ooh, wait, whoa, whoa. There. See, that's exciting. <laughs> so, well, well, Danica, um, go yes. ahead. No, so I was like, I was, um, it, th this time of year is so, so important for families who are struggling with a relationship with, you know, not being able to access their, their child. And especially right now with, there's all of this stuff in the news about pe uh, now with COVID that gives a parent like legitimacy in withholding the child. Um, and, you know, so, so what do you think about all that that you've been hearing? Well, the first thing I'll, I'll preface a little bit and say we, we've said on the air a lot things can change in an instant, right? Before this, and they have for all of us. Right. Um, so we've had to adjust, and, and I see a lot of the memes out there too with the mothers and fathers talking about this sort of distance and isolation, something something that alienated parents have been suffering for uh, for some in some cases decades. So uh, yeah, to speak at what you were just uh, pointing out is I think in a lot of cases it has been used as an excuse. I think there are precautions that have to be taken but within reason and you're going to have people that pervert that sort of um, fear and, and overblow it for their own personal gain so to speak. So uh, to the parents out there that are suffering from this I say keep plugging on. Again just like we've just seen things can change in an instant. Keep loving. That's the one universal truth Danica that we've seen through this right? Love. Yeah. Love a lot. Most other things don't matter right now. Egos, all the other BS doesn't matter. But love does. And that's the one universal truth. And I believe that. Yeah. It's so true. It's the thing is, is it's important to make sure that the, the goal is for the child to have a loving relationship with both parents. It doesn't mean that, um, and you can do it, you can be committed to that goal even in this circumstance and um and definitely acknowledge that uh i think the biggest thing is um is just acknowledging uh something i was seeing on facebook about the um the isolation i know of, i've experienced a lot of that feeling of just feeling constraint um about not being able to do not be able to go and take a trip to the beach or or whatever uh, during this time, and it really has brought in, a, brought up, you know, depression and and um, a lot of, and then of course you're thinking, going back to uh, custody matters. Um, 
we as targeted parents, we deal with this all the time. This inability to see our child, to having a loving relationship with our child and stuff like that. Um, so it, it's something that a lot of us parents deal with all the time, not just during this, this world crisis. Um, sure. And, and yep. then of course there's positive things. That's the whole thing as I think you and I are always about how right. can we take a disempowering situation and make it, uh, and, and make it the best it is, you know, that it can take, make lemonade out of it, you know? Right. There you go, Danica. We said that too. And this is, again, the reality of this is awful, this pandemic, but I've seen a lot too, and uh, that this can be an awakening as much as that has been taken away from us. Um, if, if you see it in certain ways, we're given gifts. We were given a gift here. And if you can sit and reflect, you can, there's a lot of clarity that can come from it. Um, and again, it's hard to see in the moment, but everything happens for a reason. We talked about that briefly uh, with your radio uh, appearance yesterday, right? There's a reason and, and in the moment, again, not minimizing pain. You know, my youngest son the other day he came out, he said, what do you want to do today, Dad? I said, well, I want to do, Mason, I want to shave your head. That's what I want to do. And I did. He said, okay. And then I, sh and then I let him shave a little of my head and we did my hair. But again, sir, sir, we just have fun with it. Have fun. Sometimes you have to, again, there's double guilt in this, Danica, I think, for some people, because we've talked about when you're alienated, there's that guilt of even being happy because there's that piece of you missing. And then there's that isolation. How Some people, how the hell can you stay positive when it doesn't seem like there's a light at the end of the tunnel? Well, be that light. You are that light even in your home. Uh, love is something some people, you know, remember, love isn't always, so you can't see it, so you can send it. Mm -hmm. See, it's not something that you have to be touching. You can love someone from a distance. And if that's all you can give them in that moment, that's what you give them. And it's easy to get that uh, cabin fever. Uh, and I, 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 I try to defeat that. You know, I, I get it too. Uh, but I try to defeat it with, with comedy. I leave people messages. Uh, most of the time, they're pretty, uh, try to be uplifting or comical. Um, but yeah, you just put that out there and keep loving. No, this is going to end. All this is going to end. People say, we're going to get back to normal. Well, what is normal? Anyway, um, you know, again, hopefully people will take this time and reflect and maybe have a whole new uh, lease on life. Again, it can bring you in two directions, just like anything. Here. You know, the only thing, um, I've heard the phrase, the only certain thing is that nothing is certain. Right. Um, the other thing that really is speaking to me is that, you know, this pandemic is not we can't blame it on a person. And a lot of times in our custody battles, we want to make it um, about the other person. Uh, it's easy to find one person to blame. And in a pandemic, we can't blame a person. Right. Um, and we could, in, in the pandemic, we can resist it, which actually creates more of a ne negative impact on us because we're resisting what is. And I, so shifting it back to a custody battle, you could resist what is with the relationship you have with your ex and, and even the not re, non-relationship you have with your child. You can resist it, but it only serves to, to, to tear you down emotionally and, and have you in a disempowered space. Absolutely. You know, just accept what is. Yeah, and hate will eat you up. But you know, it's when you submit to that, as, as you just talked about, Danica, that sort of, you know, and again, giving into it, meaning accepting what is. Because when you accept what is, that's, and it's all about reaction. It's all about how you deal with it. And, and what you allow, and the certain relationships that you allow, and the people that you allow in and out of your life. Remember, I say this to people privately, and I've said it on the air. It's a privilege to be in your life, folks out there. You need to see that. And live your life in that way. If, if, if there's unhealthy people, it doesn't mean certain people have had bad days. But if there's people that aren't healthy, you've got to cut them off. Again, if your glass is full of negative, there's no room for positive. And in these moments, this is when we're tested the most. You know, people out there now that, and I know there's some, there's some people that are suffering. Absolutely. And I have uh, sympathy, empathy, compassion, which seems empty. Anybody can say that. Um, if this virus comes for me, I, as I've said to my wife, again, I have some unfinished business, but overall, I'm pretty proud of the way I handle relationships and the way I've dealt with things and the way I've dealt with my life. Um, 
when it's my time, it's my time. That's why I try to tell everybody, I love you, or I have an issue with you. I don't want any unfinished, unfinished business. So for the people out there, too, it's given a lot of people a wake-up call. They've gone, whoa, I'm mortal. This could end today. What do I want to do? So which way do you want to go? Keep going down that bitter road, or do you want to say, you know what? If you're given the gift of health, and you go out there and you say, okay, this was a gift. You see it's a gift because people are dropping dead all around you. So, okay, this is a gift. Why? Why am I still here? Why? There's a reason. There's a reason for it all. For the, when you're still standing, there's a reason. So instead of sitting down, you stand up and say, oh, this is a gift. What is it? What's my purpose? So this is going to be a, a breakthrough for a lot of people. It's going to be an awakening, an enlightening uh, time for people. Are people yeah. suffering? Yes, absolutely. And it's horrible. But the people that are left and the people that we can help and we can uh, bring back up to help and, and, and enlighten and encourage and love, we're going to continue, and hopefully with a new beginning, um, getting back to our roots. And unfortunately, I see some of that isn't the case out there, but I see a lot of it is, um, where people are actually kind of finding themselves and finding what's important. You know, I saw it quickly, Danica, I saw from a friend of mine from high school, named Shannon, she had posted something where I'm paraphrasing something. It was, it was well written, and it hit me. But it was about, you know, the people that were kind of bellyaching about, you know, their kids being home and, you know, kids uh, missing out, not being in school. She said, what if one of these kids basically was kind of an introvert, kind of found themselves while they were being homeschooled? What if one of these children, because of all this, becomes a true leader, learns how to do certain things and becomes self-sufficient and rises up and becomes a leader that he or she never would have been had this not happened? That's going to happen, folks. There's certain people, certain children out there that would have never blossomed had these adversities not fallen upon us. So there is good as well. And in the midst of horror, it's hard to see that. Um, but these are the, some of the things that if you want to stay positive and continue on. You know, one of the things, too, you said, Danica, was, again, we talked about putting that energy on it. I'm a firm believer, too, is when you stress, again, there's real anxieties and real stress out there. People starving. People can't pay their bills, can't pay their rent, can't pay their mortgage. I understand that. But these sort of worries, even about, uh, again, it's good to stay smart, but when you're worried about every little thing, that eats at you more than uh, the reality itself sometimes. And it weakens your immune system, all that worry, all that anxiety. Anxiety in the short term, as we've talked about, Danny, is great. Keeps you sharp, keeps you heightened, keeps you safe. Or over that long term, it will eat you up, and it's really hard right now. And again, some people say, yeah, well, it's easy to say. Well, that's, a, that's all there is right now, is that sort of hope, that sort of knowing. So uh, hopefully we can enlighten some people out there, Danica. Yeah, you know, a lot of times what brings you, actually, sometimes we bring our own misery on ourselves because we live in that what-if world. That what-if world, that what if this happens, what if that happens, what if, you know, um, and that does not serve us. It does not do anything to empower us. It's just, it's a disempowering context. Um, right. So, I could be walking outside, Danica. I could be looking at my phone and reading all this news saying, oh man, I'm, we're so worried. All this stuff's going to, and I'm not paying attention as I walk across the road and a bus hits me. Boom. Well, <laughs> I guess I don't have to worry about it now. So again, just keep loving Danica. Keep doing your thing and have some fun. Say, wow, well, okay, what is it I could do today? That I wouldn't have been able to do. Yes. And not negatively. You know, embrace the relationships. You know, I see a lot of the people, I'm fortunate too, because I see people, uh, the joke memes throughout there, oh, I'm stuck with my wife, I'm stuck with my kids. This is a place I'm, more, I'm most happy. Uh, I enjoy my, my wife and I are best friends. We have a blast together. Uh, I've got my youngest. Uh, we have a blast. Um, we do a lot of loving, a lot of laughing, and, and a lot of talking about the future, a lot of laughing about the past. Um, so again, there's no such thing as regrets. Mm -hmm. You go back and fix what you can, and then you let the rest go. You go back to unburden. You don't go back to beat yourself up or re-traumatize. You know, that brings up to, like, I was, I was in my meditation, and, and one of the things that showed up a few, nights, a, few, a few days ago was forgiveness. Forgiveness is giving up that the past could have been a different way. And that allows you to, to even forgive yourself because, you know, knowing, knowing what the children went through, knowing what my children went through, I'm like, wow, if I had just chosen a different relationship, 
Like I could just so live in the if this and if that. And then, and ultimately in the root of it is I'm not forgiving myself. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the past could have been different. And even if it could have been different, the past doesn't exist. Right. Only our decisions now that we, well, I, the things we create for our future. I think of this saying too, you know, don't be a flat squirrel when it comes to making decisions, right? Make one, uh, you know, just make a decision. So in saying that, a little bit to that is, again, your children will see, will see that, that quote unquote regret too, and it looks indecisive. It doesn't look confident. When, when they're growing, they, kids don't necessarily do what they hear. They, they excuse me, they, they don't do what they're told, they do what they see. So again, even if it's a wrong decision, what you, the best way to do is own it. Yeah, it was a wrong decision. I was young, it was, it was, I made it. I know better now. Won't do it again. But you don't go back and, oh my God, if only, if only, if only. That's all useless. And it's a waste of time because all time you can be taking to plan what you're going to do to better yourself in the future. Because um, again, like you said, it, it's, you can't go back. And when your kids see it too, when you acknowledge that, hey, that wasn't the right sort of relationship. No indecisive, like, well, if I could have changed this, no, it was wrong. It was wrong at that time. Um, and, and I've learned from it. Boom, that's it. So then when they're growing too, okay, this is how I deal with things. I'm not going to continually beat myself up and re-traumatize myself like my mom did or like my dad did. I'm going to be real decisive about it, right or wrong. Boom. And then you, then you move forward. That's right. Yes. And moving forward, I don't want, I don't want our time to get away from us without talking about what's been, what we've been planning. Um, yeah. I know, Bud, you and I, we've been talking about this conference that we were going to have was scheduled for April the 24th and 25th in Lakeland, Florida. And of course, that uh, is not going to happen in Lakeland, Florida anymore. However, we've still moved forward with our planning team and we are doing it virtually. And um, I'm so excited, uh, but you've agreed to, to be with me on the 24th, to be on Facebook Live, to, to share all the excitement that's happening because April the 24th is the launch of um, the Guardians and Gatekeepers virtual conference platform. Um, mm -hmm. And then Saturday, Saturday morning, we're actually, those who registered for the conference um, will also be able to uh, reserve a seat in the panel discussion, the live panel discussion of experts happening um, at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Um, uh, on Zoom, in a Zoom webinar, it's, it's going to be a private meeting. It's not going to be out uh, in social media so that you'd have to be in the conference to be able to participate in this live panel discussion with experts. And then at the end, as we are honoring Bubbles of Love Day, many of you may know what Bubbles of Love Day is, but it's a global event ha that happens. And, and the goal, and these are a ton of moving parts, but the goal is after the panel discussion that we end that session and then open it up to uh, the global community to get on Zoom and we, like a, a hundred boxes will be on the Zoom window of people blowing bubbles across the We're gonna world. We're going to load them up. We're going to yeah. load them up. So. Absolutely. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to joining you, Danica. Thank you. Shout out to Dad Talks Today Network too and Eric Carroll uh, for their uh, uh, broadcasting of Custody Matters Live. Danica's wonderful show. She has people like me on, who I will be joining uh, Danica again. I've had a lot of behind the scenes things, people reaching out. And so everyone sees and knows I love Danica. And we're very excited for the future. And she sent some great guests on, Danica. I saw you had Dor Dorsey on. We discussed before the show. We thought she was a hot ticket, very smart. Uh, takes no, uh, you know what, and uh, like her very much already. So enjoyed watching a good majority of that show you did the other night. Don McCarty, um, Noel New, right, and Sweet yeah. Caroline out there who's doing a, um, a broadcast tonight, I believe, Danica, on I think Facebook so, and, yeah. and uh, Facebook Live. So go check that out. Check out all the shows on the Dad Talk Today Network, including mm -hmm. uh, Custody Matters Live. Thanks to everybody out there that. Has facilitated and helped us along the way. Yeah. And um, if you, the one thing about this platform that allowed us to do it differently and actually better 
by shifting it to a virtual platform. See, when you come, a lot of times there's, there's limitations that people come to live conferences. They can't, they can't afford to fly there. They can't, uh, there might be different kinds of limitations. The timing might not be right. But since we've shifted it to a virtual platform, it's actually um, been able to allow people to access it all over the planet. And um, you'll be able to have this con con content available for a year. To, to watch and, and everything and we're adding to it. That's the thing I wanted to point out is every day we're looking at um, experts and say, oh, you could, we couldn't fit you into the live uh, conference, but wow, let's get you on the platform. So well, everything happens for a reason, right, Danica? We always yes. say it. someone, it's, someone's gonna network here too that wouldn't have had it been in Florida. Someone's gonna connect here and all these ideas are gonna fly and all this, uh, these new, this new momentum will keep going. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And again, I have we, really missed you, bud. It's been. I've it's missed fun. you too, my friend. I've missed you very much, and I love you and thank you for being such a good friend. So people know Janet and I bounce things off each other behind the scenes, and uh, we have some good energy behind it, and we have just as good energy on the air. I have such a blast with Janet. Sometimes I forget we're even on. We just kind of ramble and roll and keep going. It's very authentic, very natural. So thank you for having me on. Thank you to all the folks up there that are joining us. Keep your heads up. It's not over till you say it's over, my friends, and we're not done by a long shot. We've got a lot of things coming up this month, and I see people, see people, I can feel the energy. I can feel it. I can feel the momentum. It's getting me right out of my seat. Danica, I want to give a shout out quickly to somebody, another show who mentioned our show. Um, Sinister Power Podcast, and Rhiannon Nicole has a, it's a horror movie show. She does a lot of movie reviews and things. I watched her show, and she gave us a very nice shout-out to Custy Matters Live at the end of her show. I was very touched by that. Uh, so thank you to Rhiannon Nicole, a.k.a. Zombie Bobby. Go check out uh, her podcast out there. Again, Sinister Power Podcast. Thank you to Rhiannon Nicole and all the people out there uh, that have given us shout-outs. Very, very honored and touched by that. I thought it was very nice. Yeah. And I truly believe it's like my mantra, my mission in life is, is unity and collaboration. The only way to really get through this life is through, um, you know, collaborating. Right. And, well, and um, in saying that quickly, I will be joining uh, Rhiannon for at least one show to go on there as a guest. Uh, and it's going to be fun to talk about some movies and things like that. I think we're going to record at some point this weekend. And she'll put it out in the next few weeks. Uh, it's going to be fun. I've known Rhiannon for a couple of years, and this should be a nice little a way to get that, that movie side of me, as you may know, Danica, out and a little bit of that fun on that platform. And you said it's all networking. It's all connections. It's all helping each other. Yes, yes, yes. All right, we've got to wrap it up. I've got That's to... Cool. Because Brian has... has we, Brian needs the, the, the setup, yeah, and I'm to not going to get on Brian's bad side. Absolutely not. He's been doing, this is so crazy because he was like, uh, cause he's the president of the Kiwanis club that we have here in some, in Lakeland. And, uh, and he said, I guess we're going to be like shut down. You know, we do these weekly meetings and we're shut down. And I said, and why? <laughs> so I've been teaching a whole group of people of Kiwanis, how to use uh, technology. Everything happens for a reason. So yeah. There we go. Thank you to everybody out there. See you again soon. Thank you to Danica. Love you, my friend. Thank you to Brian for letting us take the time and everybody out there. Chins up, my buddy John Mondew and Brian Peasley, who I reconnected with recently. I love you. Love to everybody out there. See you soon. Chins up. Come on, baby. It's not over till you say it's over. Thank you, Danica, and everybody out there. Love you. Love you.